a look at the wonderful work that was submitted this year. 36 projects in total. All have been designed and completed since March of 2018. Let's take a look. Hello, my name is Sean Owsley. As a member of the Spokane community and news anchor for the 630 News on KHQ, I am so thrilled to be your MC today to recognize the architectural excellence that has given our city and our surrounding communities so many beautiful buildings and spaces. Our program will begin in just a few minutes, but in the meantime, I do want you to know about a few other things that will be happening over the course of this evening. First off, we'll have a contest for the best dressed attendee this evening. You can go fancy, you can go casual. Can dress up like the Statue of Liberty. It's COVID, so all rules are off. We'll also be competing for best selfie over the course of the evening, and there's no limit on the number of submissions, so you can get going on that right away. We're using the hashtag AIA Spokane Design Awards for all the shenanigans tonight. So post your submissions there, along with photos of celebration or mourning as we celebrate this amazing work together apart. Or if you're all ready to go, grab yourself a drink, and enjoy a look at the wonderful work that was submitted this year. 36 projects in total. All have been designed and completed since March of 2018. Let's take a look.
Good evening. I'm Stephanie Aiden, Executive Director of AIA Spokane. Welcome to the 2020 AIA Spokane Design Awards Gala. It is April 28th and we are live from the Spokane Convention Center. No, 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 no. We need to fast forward six months to today, October 22nd, because it's been a year none of us will soon forget. We are incredibly excited to be celebrating with you tonight, even if it's not what we originally planned. But as all strong businesses must be, we are resilient and the show must go on. So from the beautiful St. John's Cathedral, we are virtual tonight for the first time in our awards program history. In lieu of the fancy gala that was to happen in April, we have smaller viewing parties going on this evening. Every architecture firm that submitted projects and every sponsor of this evening has received a party pack complete with libations, treats, and AIA Spokane swag to help get that party started. I want to personally thank all the marketing coordinators at these firms for being our viewing party hosts. You are in for an evening that will be fun, fast-paced, and participatory. Whether you're attending a viewing party or tuning in on your own, we invite you to join in the fun. Our MC Sean Owsley from KHQ will tell you how in just a few moments. Thank you, ALSC Architects, Architects West, Bernardo Wills Architects, Integris Architecture, Jordan Only, NAC Architecture, Prentice Balance Whipline, Trek Architecture, Uptick Studios, and Wolf Architectural Group for all of your project submissions. We sincerely hope you enjoy the awards celebration we have produced for you tonight. Now let's get this party started. We have some great projects to award this evening, and with us tonight to do just that is Sean Owsley. Well, good evening and welcome to the 2020 Spokane American Institute Virtual Design Awards. Again, I'm Sean Owsley. Great to be with you. And it's a privilege to be a part of these awards tonight. On behalf of AIA Spokane, we are thrilled that you are joining us. As you can see, we chose to host these awards from the beautiful St. John, the Evangelist Cathedral. With so many beautiful buildings in Spokane, we chose to be impartial and selected a location designed by an architect who is long in retirement. You don't know him, but you know of him. This beautiful edifice was designed by architect Harold C. Whitehouse of the Spokane firm Whitehouse and Price. Construction of the cathedral began all the way back in 1925 and highlights many stained glass windows and an organ with 4,039 pipes. The church that visibly sits on the South Hill Spokane has been the centerpiece of Spokane, hosting many spiritual and community events. And once again, for those just joining us tonight, we are obviously presenting awards for architectural excellence for projects designed and completed in the past two years. But that's not all. In the spirit of friendly competition, there are some fun bonus awards you can win along the way that have nothing to do with architecture and everything to do with how much you want to flex those creative muscles and how much fun you want to have at your viewing party. Here's what's going on and how it will work. First up, we have the Best Dressed Award, Crazy, Glam, or Pure Athleisure Wear. It's COVID, so most things are appropriate for any occasion. Show off those threads by posting to Instagram with the hashtag AIA Spokane Design Awards. Our second award is for the best selfie, whether you're watching from home on the couch or at a viewing party with all your wonderful coworkers, snap a selfie, throw it up on Instagram with the hashtag AIA Spokane Design Awards. At the end of the night, you'll have a chance to win big. Prizes include gift cards to local businesses and will be awarded at the end of this evening. Now, while you start to strategize about how to take home those highly coveted prizes, I do want to thank our presenting sponsor, Interior Tech. We also need to thank our builder sponsors, Garco Construction, Lydig Construction, TW Clark Construction, Dork Incorporated, Bowton Construction, Baker Construction, Yost Gallagher Construction, and Walker Construction for their support of this event. Obviously, things look a little bit different this year than normal, but we recognize it is our general contractors who build on the vision of our architects. So thank you for our builder sponsors for building Spokane. Let us also take a moment to show appreciation and thank our project ownership and stakeholders, their vision perseverance, resources, and willingness to engage the design community on a creative and collaborative level is why we are all here right now tonight. It is the benefactors of each and every commission submitted and all those unsubmitted who provide the means and initiative for the constant development and renewal of the most beloved places in our community. Thank you to all those who have dreamt of a better future, rolled up their sleeves, and charged out to build it. And finally, we want to thank all the architecture firms that submitted projects this year, 10 architecture firms, 36 separate projects, and a lot of hard work and vision given to our community. 
Our jurors had an incredible challenge this year because there were so many amazing projects. More than once, they remarked on how their perception of Spokane was transformed over the course of this process by seeing the amazing examples of diverse projects being done here in our community. And speaking of the jurors, let me introduce you to them. First, heading up the jury was Hannah Vaughn, an architect and educator from Salt Lake City, Utah, whose practice is centered around the convergence of art as material or memory and architecture as a craft and history. Her work ranges from installations and pavilions to larger institutional projects and has served on the board of directors for AIA Utah. She was joined by Cornell Anderson from Portland, Oregon. Cornell is a founding partner of Fieldwork, a Portland-based architecture firm. His work has been honored with national, regional, and local AIA design awards. He served as a juror for the National AIA Awards and the AIA Philadelphia Design Awards. And our final juror is John Kane from Phoenix, Arizona. John, a founding partner and principal architect with Architecton. His focus and expertise is in sustainable architecture in the Southwest. His sustainable designs include higher education, community centers, and civic architecture. The last thing we need to share before diving into the awards is that our hashtag isn't just for those crazy selfies and the outrageous outfits. If you win a night, take a photo of yourself in your best celebration pose and post it to social media using the hashtag AIA Spokane Design Awards, along with any acknowledgements that you'd like to make for the team and partners who worked with you on this project. At the end of our program, we'll be sharing those acknowledgements right here. Hello fellow 2020 AIA Spokane Design Awards party revelers. My name is Ryan Zane. I am your AIA Spokane Board President-Elect and Design Awards Event Chair. We are incredibly thankful for the dedicated work our jury has put into compassionately reviewing the submissions, collaborating on their merits, and selecting the award winners. Earlier this year, the Design Awards Event Committee thoughtfully pondered what characteristics a jury must have to appropriately judge the design submissions from our talented area constituents. We needed designers from wide enough geographic distinctiveness to bring an outside perspective, but from areas similar in climate, demographics, and economy to understand our constraints and advantages. Jury members with an equal representation of gender diversity. Professionals with a range of experience in project types and budgets that could easily relate to some of the best Spokane has to offer. By March, we discovered our jury absolutely had to be skilled in the very fine art of communicating through Zoom. To our 2020 Design Award jury, we are humbly honored for your professional support, inspired by your dedicated service to the AIA, and thankful for your courteous and benevolent participation. Thank you for being here to help us recognize the exceptional teams and projects in our communities this year. We're so excited to share this year's winners, so let's get started. Our first award is in the unbuilt category. We're looking for things that are um, standouts, whether again, program or um, a unique party or an interesting kind of sighting. And hopefully by giving this award that um, we're giving it to projects that might be on the, the brink of will they be built or not, um, and we want to encourage you know these these award winners to hopefully be built because they will hopefully contribute um, to the communities that they're going to be built in and um, and make a make an impact. We have one award to give in this category. It is a citation award, and the award goes to the Hive at Libby Center by Integris Architecture. Our jurors love this project and are hoping it will someday be an addition to our city. What was moving to me and I think all of us was um, the com combination of programmatic aspects. So combining the library um, with the school and then opening it up to the community. So you sort of have this hybridization of program that feels like it's really, um, really innovative and could provide like a, a, serious, um, a serious asset to the community. So I think that's kind of part of what we were Part of what we were looking at was was interesting to us. And then I think the other thing that uh, was intriguing was how it um, uh, addressed the street. Again, you're on it looked like about a 30 to 40 mile an hour street, and how it pushed it to try to create a pedestrian interface was really good. Congratulations again to Integris for the design of the Hive. Just a reminder for that guy on your team who's always showing up late. 
Winners take a photo of your team celebrating and post it to Instagram and the hashtag AIA Spokane Design Awards and any acknowledgements you'd like to make, we'll share it at the end of our festivities. Non-winners, you can take a picture of yourself too, shaking your fists in rage if that sounds cathartic. And before we move on, I wanna take a moment to thank our presenting sponsor, Interior Tech. Hi, Dan Quatier here from Interior Tech. Just want to say hello, and we are uh, excited and thankful for the opportunity to be able to uh, sponsor this event again. Congratulations to all the winners. Uh, really looking forward to seeing them, and uh, really hope to see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you so much for supporting the AIA in this event. This would not have been possible without you. Moving on, our next category is Renovation Architecture, a category committed to projects that bring new life to Spokane's history. What I always look for is how do you retain the historic kind of value, but then how do you um, turn them into now current uses in a way that doesn't destroy the history, but hopefully enhances and takes it to another level. Um, and we saw quite a few different approaches to this. Um, I think, and, and we all had kind of different opinions about this one. This is probably the, the tougher, toughest category because I think we all look at history a lot differently in, in these old buildings that we don't want to destroy. We want to figure out how to keep them, which is one of the most sustainable things that we can do. So all the projects, um, I think, were definitely um, awesome from that standpoint. We have one award to give in this category. The winner of the Renovation Architecture Citation Award goes to the Brick West Brewing Company by Trek Architecture. Let's hear what our jurors thought of that project. One of the things that struck me about this building is the the, uh, the playing with the, their, their play with transparency. So they took this old shell, so it seems like a relatively rigid shell, and then they're playing with something new within that shell. So both the interaction with the park on the exterior and connecting with it on a on an urban uh, landscape, sort of urban design scale, and then in the interior, sort of nesting their brewery operation within the building and creating some transparency from their you know, their dining and drinking area into, into that space. So these sort of shells of experience and shells of transparency were really interesting within this additional framework, right? So that was that was pretty um, is, is smart and it's interesting and it enhances your human experience. It was a well executed project. Um, they retained, they did a good job retaining what was there, but I think really enhancing it. Um, I think the diagrams was, they were calling it the intervention. Um, it, the intervention was definitely, you know, of this era. It was modern. It was kind of crisp detailing. Um, and it just seems like it's a good asset for the community uh, and the neighborhood. It just seems like a place you would want to be and to hang out um, and hopefully, you know, then help um, spur other kind of development in that area. Congratulations to Trek Architecture once again. Do not forget, take a picture, share with us your best celebration faces on the post and the Instagram hashtag, again, AIA Spokane Design Awards with any acknowledgements to the deserving people that you work with. Maybe even the undeserving partners. It's a celebration, isn't it? Coming up next is awards for projects under $5 million. We enjoyed evaluating this category because it was so diverse. Um, so you have residential, um, you have um, institutional, um, you know, you have academic. So kind of very broad as far as programmatic. I think this this um, this sub five million dollar category it, it speaks to a certain scale of a project, and the scale can can vary a bit. Um, but the scale is something that can is is both small and allows for a lot of attention to detail, but also big enough to have an impact, especially pending the programmatic activity there. So um, the projects can be pretty um, pretty impactful, and I think that's it's kind of a kind of a nice balance between those two things that that is particularly strong in this in this category. We had four winners in this category, which had amazing submissions, and our jurors were so excited by the projects they saw. First, we'll start with our citation award, which goes to the Whitworth University Sealy G. Mudd Chapel Expansion by Integris Architecture. 
I think we all what we what we talked about was how this this was one of those projects that was extremely quiet. Um, and not all all architecture awards need to, you know, be hey, look at me and really stand out. So this this did a really nice job of being very respectful um, and and fitting into the existing building that it was um, basically connected to. And then how it related to the this wonderful landscape around it. The entry sequence was really beautiful, and then we all really enjoyed that internal courtyard. The interior courtyard to me had a had a really um, unique unique role in that it it was integrated into the new piece of architecture, but it also had a really positive impact on the old piece of architecture. So it sort of moderated between these two spaces in an, in an elegant elegant way, where it sort of augmented the experience in both of those spaces. So. Congratulations to Integris Architecture for their wonderful work. Still in the category of projects less than $5 million, we have our first of three merit awards, the Stillwater Residence in Whitefish, Montana by Prentice, Balance, and Wickline. The relationship between the building and where the edge of the landscape drops off into, into um, you know, basically a little river valley. So they're sort of playing with this edge condition and locating in a way where it's not just, you're not just like up against the river's edge, like looking down, you're sort of pulled back a little bit, but you still have, can experience that. And I would say additionally on the other side, they've managed to create a sense of privacy by a winding road and sort of um, recreating a few meadows with some expertly Placed trees. So you have this approach that's at once private, feels both natural and intentional simultaneously. And it's just, it feels like there's a lot of, there's a lot of poetry. The next winner also receiving a merit award for their work on Little Star Montessori School in Winthrop, Washington, also by Prentice Balance and Whitline. Yeah, we were really, really liking this project. The, the the simplicity of, of this project, I think and it was another, was a main reason we really liked it. The clarity of the diagram, um, how the vernacular form had this um, manipulation along the courtyard that seemed to manipulate the scale appropriate for the kids that are using this. We really love the sectional quality of how, uh, the simple sectional quality uh, allowed daylight to come in and, and really activate the spaces. And um, yeah, it was just a, just really clean and appropriate and um, nice project. We also really just a nice appropriate material palette for what it is. There's it's sort of durable where it needs to be but you know with kind of concrete and these harder materials but also it's kind of soft where it needs to be too so there's some interventions of, of wood casework and cabinets um, I think where the kids really interact with things is where those softer, warmer material, uh, materials are. Congratulations on receiving two merit awards. You must be doing a lot right. And finally, our final merit award in the under $5 million category goes to Riverstone Transit Center in Coeur d'Alene, designed by ALSC Architects. We really love this project. It's, a, it's the type of project that could also feel very cold and institutional, um, but it had a really deft touch. It's a very rigorous plan. Um, the materials kind of reflect its use, but they're not cold. So we love the, the use of concrete, the use of steel, um, the use of wood. It's sort of warm and inviting while, while also still being kind of rugged and reflecting its use as a transit center. The lighting is also nice in that it's lighting the lighting the mass and lighting the activity. So that's really well done, particularly for the for the specific use, which I assume is a 24 hour use or near 24 hour use um, project. So it doesn't feel like uh, lighting up a prison yard or something like that, right? It feels like it's lighting up um, lighting up activity. So it feels both safe and inviting simultaneously without it feeling, again, sort of institutional or, or too chilly um, to be occupied. Congratulations, ALSC Architects and all of the award winners in this category. Just another friendly reminder, post a photo or photos of your celebration to Instagram with the hashtag AIA Spokane Design Awards, as well as acknowledgments to the folks who helped you each and every day on these projects. We don't want anyone to think you're stodgy old architects trying to hog all the credit for yourselves, do we? And while I'm reminding you of things, don't forget the other important wards of the evening. Best dressed, best selfie. Let's see them. To play, just snap a picture showing off your outfit or your selfie. 
and you know the hashtag AIA Spokane Design Awards. We know that's the real reason you're all tuning in this evening. Our Instagram is blowing up with hundreds of photos of celebration for the architects in Spokane and their amazing work. There are photos of celebration, maybe some fist shaking, drinking your sorrows away, congratulating the hard work of your peers. Honestly, I don't have any idea if that's actually happening because this was pre-recorded weeks ago, but it should be happening. So go hop on Instagram and get to posting so we can celebrate even better together while still apart. This next category had an incredible number of submissions, the above $5 million category. The over 5 million by far had the most submissions and they also were of a very similar typology and scale. So in some ways, uh, it, it might've been the most difficult to evaluate because um, there were a lot of similar projects. Um, but then the projects that we selected, I think, really did kind of excel. We are so excited to celebrate these projects and the impact they have on our community. We'll start with a citation award. Our first recipient is the Vanessa Behan Crisis Nursery by NAC Architecture. Um, this project in particular had a really difficult, um, challenging program. A lot of times in those situations, those, those types of buildings can feel really institutional because they're dealing with um, a lot of security issues. I felt like this project was really deft at dealing with security issues, but also with this really warm, soft touch. I think the other thing we were really impressed with for these kind of projects that don't have very big budgets at all, um, how much architecture they were able to achieve both internally and externally in terms of how it um, contributed to the to the community. And in terms of the colors and the articulation and really walked the line um, very carefully between something being institutional and safe and something being welcoming and friendly and it kind of has to be both simultaneously and that's a, it's a fine line to walk so they, they did it really really expertly and I think uh, achieved something really nice with it. Congratulations to NAC Architecture on their wonderful work the next award in our over $5 million category is a Merit Award. The recipient is the North Idaho College, Bob and Leona DeArmond College and University Center by Integris Architecture. I think we felt like this building felt like it really belonged in um, the overall context and just regionally. The materials felt sort of of the place, you know, they were kind of a little rough in some ways with the concrete and the weathering steel, um, but then really crisp, refined details. One thing I think we were all really moved by was just the use of use of materials. So the using you know wood and concrete and running them from inside to outside and having sort of really nice connections with material and really well crafted um, execution was was one of the reasons we selected that. You couldn't, it, it seemed like the same designers were working on, on both inside and out and, and that it just had a, a level of sophistication that seemed to rise this project above a lot of the other projects that we're looking at that had similar um, program. Our final award in this category is an honor award. This award goes to the project I'm sure everyone is familiar with and it is spectacular if you've seen it. The Riverfront Park Pavilion by NAC Architecture. Yeah, we were really jazzed about this project. Um, I think the community is really fortunate to have a project of this magnitude and, and um, importance. Um, I think that the thing that we were really impressed with was this idea of, 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 a, of a restoration, um, adapt to reuse, however you want to define it, um, and not doing the typical thing, but really transforming something from a big shade canopy to something about light. It just like is very joyful, playful, um, but it's also kind of a light hand. Um, you know, the geometries they used um, are strong, but they also um, kind of work with what's there. The landscape in particular, like the intervention with the ground allows you to be there both in large groups and as an individual and not to uh, not to feel like the speak like you don't belong there. So it doesn't feel like a big empty thing, which I think is really is really sort of a, a, a cool aspect to you. 
it's just a great, um, great, joyful, joyful project. Congratulations once again to all the winners in this category. Before we move on to the special categories, I do want to let you know that the end of our festivities is fast approaching. And if you'd like to submit to the contest we've been running, time is running out. Get creative, get involved. Best dressed, best selfie, which we know is the contest everyone really cares about. Do it now. And yet another reminder, share an acceptance photo on Instagram with all your peeps. Share anything you'd like about the team, your client, the collaborators on the project. Tag your contractors and engineers on the project so they know how much more fun architects have. Now for our special categories. First, the Sustainability Award. So the category, I mean, do, do the prompt. It's, it, you know, sustainability in terms of both environmental sustainability and stewardship and also in terms of, you know, uh, sort of social social responsibility. Yeah, I mean, I think we were looking for accessible technologies. There's a lot of technology out there that uh, most clients can't afford. So, you know, clients' budgets are put to good use. The Sustainability Award is an award to recognize design that is built with our planet and community in mind. This year, the Sustainability Award goes to the Little Star Montessori School in Winthrop, Washington, designed by Prentice, Balance, and Wickline. Congratulations. Um, I think what we really all appreciated about that was the simplicity of the sustainable moves. Um, we, it doesn't have a lot of the high tech technology and all that stuff. It's really about really smart, um, simple ideas of orientation, of, of strategic daylight. Um, building as protection, um, all these kinds of things were working together harmoniously to create just a really simple, elegant solution um, that worked with the architecture and, the, and I think made the, um, the program just take it up a whole, whole nother level. Congratulations again to Prentice, Balance, and Wickline. And now for the Craftsmanship Award. I think for the for the Craftsmanship Award, one of the things that we were, uh, we were looking for is basically not not only a, a thoughtfulness from the perspective of the designer in terms of how you put things together, how they join, how they interact, uh, what they are, how they're articulated, but also um, how that got followed into execution, so how that's articulated in the field. The tough part about this one is that we're usually not, most of the images aren't zooming in on the details themselves, so we're trying to interpolate um, what the craft is throughout the project. The things that were looked at when we gave this award were the consistency of the details and the craft throughout all of the images that we had to um, evaluate from. And um, that probably was one of the reasons why we gave it to, the, to this particular project. Recognizing attention to detail from the original design to the site, construction material, and build quality. For 2020, the Craftsmanship Award goes to Stillwater Residence, also by Prentice Balance and Wickline. And I think there's a, there's a lot of a lot of it feel, felt kind of pragmatic, you know, like you want to block the wind or something, or you want to block the block the sun, you know, you want to control the solar angle, so you're going to extend this roof into a really nice point. But it's um, there's there's a lot of poetry to it, so I think it's a really elegant mix of that pragmatism and poetry, where it didn't feel um, sort of superfluous or ostentatious to make those moves, but it, that felt really integrated into the architecture and was on the on the hand scale, you know, uh, really well executed. There weren't too many moves. There weren't too many different things going on. I, I, I always appreciate there's something that kind of weaves the entire project together and the, and the materials, the, the way they come together was consistent throughout the project and really, really appreciated that. Congratulations again. In just a few moments, we'll be sharing your photos. So get those in now, just a few more minutes. All the cool kids are doing it. And of course, we still have to share the winners of our Instagram contests. Then you can celebrate your success, drown your sorrow, or go write angry letters to our wonderful judges. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. The winner of our best dress contest is... I, of course, have no idea who won or why, because this was all recorded weeks ago, but I'm sure it was well-deserved. And now for Best Selfie, after a truly fierce competition, the award goes to...
And now, in all seriousness, we want to thank all of you who voted for the People's Choice Award. After tallying all your votes, the winner is... Congratulations to all of tonight's winners, and thank you for letting me be a part of this wonderful evening. Hello, I'm Kathy Russell, your 2020 AIA Spokane Board President. A huge congratulations to our 2020 AIA Spokane Design Award winners. What a big night for Integris Architecture, Trek Architecture, Prentice Balance and Wickline, ALSC Architects, and NAC Architecture. You've done a great job and we appreciate all 36 entries and the contributions that you all have made these past few years to our region. You should be enormously proud of the excellent work that has been produced. In our field, it takes so much time to go through the process of programming, designing, and constructing that it's easy to forget to celebrate our accomplishments. To conceive of a design and then be able to walk into that idea a year or two later is nothing short of a superpower. It takes a huge team of people working together, overcoming countless obstacles along the way with creativity and resolve. And in this especially difficult year, the celebration is all the more meaningful. This night would not be possible without our sponsors. We thank Interior Tech as our presenting sponsor this evening and to our builder sponsors, Fountain Construction, Baker Construction, TW Clark Construction, Dork Incorporated, Yost Gallagher Construction, Garco Construction, Walker Construction, and Light Egg Construction. You have helped build Spokane, and we thank you for your support tonight. Thank you to Little Fish Productions and to Sean Owsley of KHQ. And a big thank you to our Design Award Committee, Ryan Zane, Emily Meyer, Brad Hakala, Aaron Taran, Gail, Gail Stanley, and Stephanie Aiden. Putting on events like this would not be possible without member involvement. As we close out our celebration and 2020, we hope we'll all be back together again in person in 2021. And don't forget, post your photos to Instagram, hashtag AIA Spokane Design Awards.